evening everybody i am hoping that i am live um oh, i'm just going to show my thing yeah. oh, i've got vans arriving they better not be delivering anything <laughs> um yeah so i'm hoping that i'm live and that you can hear me um oh, you can hear the advert now that's no good is it Oh, there we go. You can hear me. That's brilliant. Um, I think I've got somebody at the door now. Oh, they'll just have to go away. <laughs> so, uh, uh, oh, goodness me. It's gone. That's fine. Oh, honestly, the deliveries, they get, they, they're brilliant, but they just get later and later every day. <laughs> just anyway. So tonight, and um, hopefully you can all hear me. I need to get this live chat here brilliant sorry about that yeah <laughs> so um so we're going to be drawing this uh little horse ears here they're not actually that little if i was doing the this is a portrait it would be quite a big portrait i think um and then also i'm going to i'll just give you a quick glimpse of him now because i really love him but i'm gonna i'm gonna talk you through my little tiger cub as well so we're gonna have a look at him as well a little bit later today so um i'm hoping to be on for about an hour uh and we'll um we'll see what happens so we're working on the dark gray pastel mat rather than the white pastel mat oh i'm really well thank you esky i'm, I'm okay today um i've had a i've had a really really busy day <laughs> I've just kind of been running around all over the place. It's been a bit mad today. Um, dog went and had a haircut. <laughs> Son had to go to work. Um, oh, I picked up my elephant. Oh my goodness, I picked up my elephant. I've I've got to. I can't show you on on here because it's it's colossal. But what I'm hoping to do is take a picture of me holding the elephant all framed, and the frame is oh my goodness, it's absolutely amazing. It's um, it's the most fantastic frame, honestly. <laughs> it looks fantastic. I'm so pleased with it. Uh, so anyway, um, I could just chat away. I'll just I'll just sit here all day, just holding my pencil, and I'll just talk. I don't need to draw at all, do I? Um, so hi hi everybody. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a start, and uh, I'm going to make a start. I'm going to use the. I find the Pablo's work really really well on the um, on the dark gray i used a lot of pablos on the elephant actually um and um so i've got the cream here the pablo cream not not very sharp uh and what i'm what i tend to do usually on a piece like this is i'll actually put in quite a few of the highlighty bits first just to give me an idea of um you know what i'm doing and currently what i'm doing is i'm completely procrastinating so that i don't have to put a mark on the paper <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing because I've been working on smooth paper so this is the first time I've been using pastel mat since I did the elephant um, I'm doing a big um, double portrait as well at the minute and that's on um, I'm doing that on the Fabriano as well uh, so yeah so it's just pure procrastination on my part I'm not wanting to start um, yeah anyway so I hope you're all okay um, Slipper's had a haircut she looks brilliant um, Vincent oh he is the funniest funniest dog he um he loves anything that smells delicious um you know perfume clean clean slipper <laughs> clean nelly anything that's clean he really likes so of course poor slipper was accosted as she came in through the door but she kind of gave him a, a little bit of what for <laughs> and he stopped pretty swiftly um so she's nice and clean but what i'm basically doing here is i'm using my cream pablo just to very quickly bring in some of those um like paler colored hairs if you like that are coming in this ear here um and i can i'll then what i'll then do is i'll then go and put all of the darks in or the the darkest darkest darks in so i've got my lightest lights and my darkest darks um and that's basically how i how i kind of you know work the work the pastel mat i use different techniques on the dark gray than i do if i was using the white um, I tend to use, this is this just the normal paper you can probably oops you can probably see that being lifted up there um, there you go it's just the normal paper that I've got here um, so it's sort of, I don't know what you'd call this like the card I suppose um, the white pastel mat I tend to use the board version and that's much much smoother um, and I tend to use probably techniques that I would use for a smoother paper for the white 
uh, past on that. But you've still got to kind of get in there and not not burnish as such. Just use your pencils to kind of get the um, um, the, the grain, you know, get rid of the grain, which you can do relatively easily um, unless you've got a really horrible piece of pastel mat which sadly it's kind of the look of the draw really um, I'm quite lucky with this this is a very smooth piece uh, it's, it's nice um, so that's all I'm doing at the minute is is just sort of popping these colors in here uh, just the just the cream just to give me a nice idea of how these ears are going to work um, I'm just going to put a few little bits up on this top bit here as well. Now my elephant, I am absolutely, I'm so surprised that I've used a full sheet of the pastel mat. Um, and there is not one mark on the outside of the elephant apart from on the elephant. Um, it, it's astonishing, to be honest. <laughs> because, you know, I've got, well, there is actually one, and I showed it on the on the tutorial when I was doing it, there's one part which luckily dried of uh, the mark of a deer hound's nose that's just sort of pressed against part of the pastel mat. Thank goodness, thank goodness pastel mat dries and doesn't leave a mark <laughs> because it is literally Vinny's imprint of his nose, little rascal. Um, you can bet your life I didn't call him a little rascal as well. Um, I'd literally just walked out. I think I'd, I'd gone to the loo. I wanted to get a cup of tea or something, walk back in and I'm like, what's that? It was a big, wet nose mark on my elephant drawing. <laughs> it was a rat back. Anyway, so. Um, oh, let's have a look at this. Uh, I'm waffling on. Bonnie, I'm finding the Pablos hard to lie down on normal paper. There's nowhere as much pigment in them as the polychromos. Do you find this? Um, I find myself wanting to push hard to get colour out and it hurts my hands, so I like them. But Oh, okay. So if you're working on normal paper... If, you, you you kind of um you kind of are going to have to push a little bit harder anyway to be honest it is just something that you will find you need to do and and I have to admit when I'm working on the the hot press paper I, I my wrist hurts as well um now are are they new are they new Pablo's hello shiny are they new to you have you just bought them or have you had them for a while because I'm just wondering if there's been an issue with some manufacturing things. I know that Jason Morgan's had some issues with um, with some pastels and like not just a little issue as in like a huge major, major issue. Um, and I'm just wondering maybe if they're new um, Pablo's, whether they've got a bit of a, a problem with the pigment. Maybe some of the binders haven't been quite right um, because, you know, you should be able to get nice colouring down on your paper quite easily. Um, the Pablos are quite a, a, a vibrant, uh, richly pigmented pencil, so there shouldn't really be an issue. Um, the ones that I'm using, I've had for a while. Uh, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't bought any new ones recently. Um, so I, I'm just thinking it could be that. Um, and I've used Pablos on the smooth paper before, and it's not not been a hasn't been an issue. So that's the that's something that I think. It could be a possibility. Uh, I'm not saying it's definite, but it could be a possibility. Um, do I prefer the dark grey pastel mat border of the ordinary grey pastel mat? Uh, yeah, I, I do. I must admit, I do prefer a, a bo the board over uh, the other. But the reason I prefer it is because it's smooth. If I can get a piece of pastel mat card that's that's relatively smooth, I'll use that. And that's perfect. And this is relative. This is a really nice smooth piece. You can run your hand over it, and it feels like um, feels like an old soft tea towel. <laughs> that's a, that's a good way of describing it, isn't it? You know, a, a nice old tea towel that you've had for 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 years and years. That's kind of the feel of it. Sort of like that sort of velvety soft feel. Um, whereas you can get some that are really quite horrible. You know, or almost like a like concrete. Um, you know that's sort of almost like pebble dashed I, I don't i you know it's a shame i just wish they could all be the same really and i know some pastel artists prefer them to be that little bit grainier because you know that's that that kind of works well for them so i've got my um i've got my little bits of light in there which is great and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my um dark sepia would you believe um, and I'm just going to start to bring in a little bit of the dark in the, in between. I'm going to use really, really nice soft pressure. And I'm just going to sort of gently uh, bring in just a little bit of pigment in here. 
very 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 gently just to start to bring in a little bit of that dark start to bring in maybe a little bit of the oh, I've spat on my page now um a little bit of the um not necessarily details but you know a, a bit of texture a bit of texture doesn't doesn't hurt at all but the details will kind of you know come later but if i can if i can indicate texture and i can indicate a little bit of detail in there then you know then i will um so i'm just going to bring that in there um we've got some darker oranges and stuff going on in there as well but at the minute this is kind of the darkest darkest area the middle of the horse's ear so these are horse's ears are, are funnel shaped um you know they're kind of set on on the head and they can cut they've got amazing um dexterity they can kind of you know swivel round and uh, you can tell a horse's mood by its ears um you know so they're they're, a, they're obviously an incredibly important part of, of the horse's anatomy but they can be really tricky to draw um and i think it's the fluff and it's kind of understanding the the anatomy of the ear as well and how it kind of sits on the horse's head and it can just be a little bit of a, a tricky one so i thought it'd be a good one to to draw um now then do you know or own any football oh no Alana. oh honestly well what what i'm gonna do is i am going to buy some a couple of projectors so I've got my projector, which is amazing. It's, it's absolutely brilliant and I love it. And it's it's up on my overhead rig at the minute and it's brilliant. Um, but they don't make it anymore. Which is, and I actually bought mine from um, a, a lovely friend in Canada. She was selling her second hand and I actually bought mine from her. Uh, and it was still very, very expensive, but it's an excellent projector. Uh, you know, not that I'm boasting because nobody else can buy one, but it really is an excellent projector. But they don't make it anymore, which is so sad. And it's a proper art projector. There's this thing called Keystone on it so I can change the perspective. I don't have to have it flat to my, um, you know, uh, uh, page or anything like that. And um, I, sh I should probably actually shut up now because it's not fair because nobody, else, you can't buy one because they don't make them. So we've been trying to or, you know, there's a few of us who've sort of like been, been talking about what projectors um, you know are any good and I found another make that I thought was good but apparently they're now st sort of stopping making theirs as well and it's it's about finding a projector that's got high enough lumens that you can you can use it without having to, to close all the curtains and, and shut all your lights down so you're kind of fumbling around in the dark um, you know which is and that's quite hard to do drawing in the dark I know you've got your, your, your image you know shining on your page but it is quite tricky to do so I thought what I'd do is I'd, I'd, I'd invest in a couple of, you know, relatively, not really expensive ones, but relatively cheap ones, but ones that are, um, you know, uh, going to do the job uh, and do some testing and just test them. Because what I found when I bought a projector in the past um, and then realised it wasn't it wasn't uh, good enough uh, quality, what what I've what i've done what, or what i found is that it, the resolution just hasn't been high enough so you might the lumens might be great and it might kind of shine and you can do it in the daytime and all of that type of stuff but then the, the resolution just isn't high enough and everything's pixelated and it's just not it just doesn't work so i thought i'd, I'd purchase a couple of different ones and just see um you know what what we can do and see if i can review them and see if they see if they actually uh, are any good um, because I know there's quite a lot of people who are who fancy getting a projector because they really do save time you know um, if, if you're busy and you've got t you know tons of commissions all of that type of stuff and you're you're kind of you know building your building your business the, the last thing you want to be doing is well not the last thing you can do whatever you want to do but you know if you can save time in places um, then you know that's always a really good thing um, you know, and having a projector just to be able to sort of quickly project an image and just whack it on the paper is brilliant. Um, you know, and it's not it's not it's not cheating or anything because, you know, you've got to be able to draw to be able to colour it in, <laughs> you know, because that's all I'm doing now. I'm just colouring, um, you know, so that's what I was thinking of doing is 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 uh, investing in a couple of different projectors and just having a bit of a test and recording them and, and letting you know, you know, what I what I think. 
Um, and I know uh, Lisa Clough, the Lacry Fine Art, she did one a, a while ago, a really, really good comparison. But one of them was the Artograph Inspire, which is the one that I've got. And of course, they don't make it anymore. And I don't think they make the one that she uh, reviewed against that one either. It's a real shame. Um, so let's let's have a go. Blah, 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 blah. How do I how do you transfer the image on pastel mat or you freehand it on? Um, so there you go. I've done it. I did it via my um, projector. Um, what I tend to do is I do a very very rough outline. You can see here it's quite a rough outline, um, and then everything's kind of freehanded in. When I did my little lion, I'll just bring him in quickly just to sort of show you. Um, when I did my little lion, the nose area here. Um, I rubbed all of that out. <laughs> I'm not used to using smooth paper and I rubbed it all out and I didn't have anything. So all of this had to be kind of freehanded really. Um, you know, and it's fine because I can freehand. I can freehand very well. Um, but um, what happens when I freehand is that it takes probably another 12 hours, adds another 12 hours onto my drawing. And, you know, for me, it's not necessary. I can do it um, if I can just do a really quick... Um, you know outline then that's brilliant for me and also my freehanding is a bit weird um i don't if i'm going to freehand something for myself i don't i don't draw an outline i start with the eye and i work out and that's how i freehand i can't grid to save my life um you know all my children's lives or, or the dog's lives honestly if i had to save them all and i had to grid that i just couldn't do it <laughs> <laughs> they'd all perish um I, I just don't understand gridding i just don't get it um you know my brain just doesn't work that way so yeah so i don't um let's have a look um they seem like cheap pencils and i saw that video and wondered that too i might invest here oh okay well yeah well hopefully you've got the correct ones and they're not they're not a knockoff um that's really interesting that is really interesting actually yeah you can email me about that hello shiny if you want and we can we can try and get that you know sussed out um is there a big difference between pastel mat and pastel mat board uh um well there shouldn't be it should be identical but there is um sadly uh, um i find the pastel mat board is much smoother much smoother um uh, you know to to a point where the white pastel mat board is almost akin to a smooth paper um, you know, and, and how, and you've got to be quite careful when you layer on it, because if you use too much pressure, it can smear and you can end up with sort of like quite muddy, um, colors. So, uh, right. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to come in onto the second beer now and just add a little bit of dark on there. I like to add my darks and my lights so that I can see the tonal values. Tonal values are by far the most important part of your drawing um they are the tonal values are what is going to make your drawing look realistic you know you can you can have a completely different this horse could be bright purple if your tonal values are correct it's going to look realistic um you don't need to have a ton of um details for something to be realistic uh, but but if you're missing tonal values if you're missing darks and lights and midtones if everything's looking a little bit flat, then that's not going to look realistic. So that's a really, really important part of, um, you know, uh, drawing realism is the contrast and the values. So that's what I like to kind of start with, get my lights in and my darks in, and then I can work out what goes in between. Um, I've got a video that I'm working on at the moment. I've done like a bit of a teaser 30 second thing, just sort of talking about it, but basically around developing your art or developing your drawing and how how can you get from a to b basically um, and it's using the first portrait that i ever did so i'm going to be using that um, against uh, another another portrait and i'm going to be really going into quite a lot of depth as to the things that I've changed and the things to look out for and the things to understand when you're, you know, you're just starting out. You, you've almost got to go through all of that, the pain of making mistakes um, and all of that type of thing before you can, because it's all a learning process. You've got to learn those things. So I've, I've got a video on the go. Um, it's all kind of storyboarded out and I'm starting to record little bits and pieces of it. Um, and it's, it's going to be quite in depth about, 
developing your art, your, your, it's going to be specifically about colour pencil, um, but developing your pencil skills, you know, and, and what you can do to help and what to look out for, um, you know, because, um, yeah, I think it'd be quite interesting, really. It'd be quite interesting for me as well, you know, to create something like that. And, um, and then I'll be sharing that and hopefully it will be useful. So I'm just kind of coming up here, still using the dark sepia. Um, you know, I love the dark sepia. It's a really great pencil. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of dark in here as well. Now, the, the brilliant thing about pastel mat is, um, oh, somebody's just sent me a, 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 an email about a, um, a projector, which sounds really good. So, uh, I'll have a look at that. Whoever sent me that. Thank you very much. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the thing about pastel mat is that you can, you know, I can lift all of this off if I want. It's going to leave a little bit of residue behind. But, you know, just because I'm putting a colour down now doesn't mean to say that that's going to stay there forever. Uh, you know, I can layer over the top of it. I can incorporate it. I can kind of dab it out with my putty eraser, all that type of thing. So it's, it's you know, it's pretty good, really. Um, right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my dark indigo. Um, cow ears are expressive too. Oh, yeah. Uh, Deborah Stapley, but I've gone from drafting film to pastel mat and I'm really struggling. Oh, well, yeah, well, it's a, it, it's a very, very different surface. So the, um, you've gone from, hang on a second. I've gone from drafting film to pastel mat. Yeah. It's going to feel really weird. Um, it might even feel really horrible <laughs> because you've gone from something that literally has no tooth at all. It's just got this, um, the surface man-made surface on the on the top um but uh yeah so you you're then moving on to something that has got a huge amount of tooth um and that's going to feel very 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 different um now it's all about muscle memory and it's all about the other thing about it is actually it's all about whether you actually want to use pastel mat because not everybody wants to use pastel mat not everybody wants to use smooth paper not everybody wants to use drafting film you know i think i think when you first start drawing i think there's a bit of a minefield about what what's available and i think um you'll see one person using something like oh i'll get some of that so you, you get some of that and then and then you try that and then you get something else and then you get something else and 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 in a way that's great because you get to try all sorts of different surfaces um you know and you can work out what works best for you now for me uh, you, you know i tried fabriano a couple of a couple of years ago two and a half three years ago actually um and i couldn't make head or tail of it i could not make head or tail of it uh, uh, you know i did a piece on it it looked okay but you know nothing like what my work on pastel mat was like um so I, I i gave it another go with this little lion cub that i did and you know I, I found it was much more intuitive um i found it was much not easier because i don't i don't think any paper is easy but i kind of got it a little bit better and i think that's through my experience of using pencils um you know and also i think pastel mat has been a really really good teacher for me because it's a it's a tricky surface it is a tricky surface you know so um i would keep going with it i would keep going with it uh deborah you know and 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 give it a go but if you hate it and you're struggling with it and you're not enjoying it don't use it it doesn't matter you know um you know you can get you can get just as lovely results on on other papers you know so don't um yeah don't don't beat yourself up if you uh, if you don't like it it's it's fine so I'm just, this is the dark indigo, the polychromos dark indigo that I'm using here. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get quickly in some of these shapes in this forelock, um, you know, and where there are sort of like dark, dark places, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, putting those darks in. Uh, I'm quite being quite sketchy. I'm just sort of, you know, um, I want it to look relatively pretty. To be honest and I, and I think at the moment this is looking relatively pretty I think it's looking okay um, you know if I can get away with not having too many ugly stages in my drawing then I will I will try for that have and you know pieces do go through ugly stages I know that but 
if you can get away with not having them then that's really good because it kind of spurs you on and it makes you want to carry on you know if you've got something that's looking relatively nice on your drawing board you're going to feel good about it it's going to be like oh you know this is looking all right and if you've got something that looks absolutely dreadful <laughs> which a lot of mine really do look absolutely dreadful <laughs> you know it's like oh god um when i did my whiskers on the lion i was like oh crikey what's going on here and um i did my usual that'd be right and it wasn't right <laughs> and i'm gonna have to i don't know get lessons there's a fabulous artist on one of my groups um called she's an australian artist called helen and she's um she's just put a video up about embossing well she calls it debossing i think the debossing is the correct word to use i think and I'm like, I'm going to have to get lessons off um, of her to get to for smooth paper for whiskers, get those embossing and everything in um, because, um, oh, gosh, honestly. Yeah, Whis it's whiskers, it's blooming whiskers. I have this real problem with whiskers. I don't know what it is. You know, give me a pair of fluffy ears. Give me a fall up. Not a problem. Give me a whisker. That's it. I'm gone. <laughs> um very weird um okay so here we go how much pressure are you using with your pencil right so i'm going to just put my my little fat chubby hand here and i'm going to show you how much pressure i'm using so that is the pressure i'm using that is kind of medium pressure <laughs> and watch this i'll draw blood now that's hard that's hard pressure where i can actually draw on the back of my hand um so i'm using that so i don't really want to indent my skin i did um i did a demo using a tangerine a piece of tangerine as well um on a on one of my videos um and that was quite good actually because if you try and draw on a squishy piece of tangerine or a tomato if you go too hard you are going to squish it and it's going to go all over your paper so that's quite a good one to try but um yeah just very 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 lightly to begin with but but you would temper your you would temper your pressure you know you would let me just um turn my airplane mode on you would temper your pressure so you would start off really light and then you would start to change up your pressure and you'd start to kind of bring a little bit dark a little bit of light all that type of thing in you know so that's that's what you need to do now i've forgotten to bring in a little bit of um well i, I won't go into I might do this tonight i'm thinking i haven't put in here I really need to bring in the apricot pablo in here and I also need to bring in probably a cinnamon in there as well um, to get these sort of like paler bits in that fall up there which I haven't done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a little bit of colour into the ears now that we've got this sort of these dark bits in there. In fact no I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use my black and I'm just going to bring in a little bit of extra darkness in here. What you'll find when you pick your pencils up and you use them on... Um, on the pastel mat some of them will go down really smooth and creamily and you'll, you'll be like i don't know what everybody's going on about this pastel mat thing it's brilliant look at this it's all lovely and smooth and then you'll pick up something like a black and you'll put it down and you'll be like what on earth and it'll be like grainy as anything um with black what i tend to do is if it if black's going down in a dark area like it's going down here i will increase my pressure so the pressure i'm using on the black here we've still got that blue there look You'll know if this is still there next week that I haven't washed. Um, <laughs> I have washed. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Anyway, so black, um, I'm going to be using pressure like that. So I'm actually going to be pressing quite hard in here um, because it's black and I want it to be black. I don't want to be faffing around and, you know, you know, fanning around, getting sort of like light layers in there. If it's if it's dark, it's dark. So get it, get it, get it in there. Um, so and I just wanted to kind of bring that in there. Uh, you know, just to get a little bit more of that dark. I think it's always good to get your darkest darks in. We'll get that in there as well. And then what happens is we start to get a little bit of form in there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, got an autograph trace of it. I had to return it. I couldn't get the images. I know they. I know. I know. They're all a bit funny. Um, Check out the Pablos. Can I ask a question about drafting film? You can. Problems with using dark colours on drafting film. I don't get a really dark colour, but it gives a shiny oily film. Okay, so that will depend as well on um, uh, on the pencil that you're using. If you're using something that's wax-based and you use a really hard pressure, then it's going to go qu shiny quite quickly. So if you're using like a Derwent uh, drawing, for example, a Derwent drawing black or something like that, you're going to get quite a lot of uh, shine in there because it's a very waxy pencil. 
what you can do and and you know you you are going to get a little bit of shine but it will depend on the the layering really and how many layers with with drafting film i think if you've got a really dark area get the dark in in as fewer layers as you possibly can you know don't try and layer it up with loads of different colours underneath and then go on the on the top and then go, oh, God, I'm going to have to go even darker and start to really press. Because actually that that is going to, you know, all of those layers and then the one on the top that you have to press really hard, that is going to give you some shininess. So like I'm doing here, get a little bit of a semblance of something in and then just go in, just go in hard <laughs> with, your, with your black. And the other thing you can do as well is just flip it over and go in on the back. Uh, you know, and that'll be that'll be absolutely fine. Um, right, so now I'm going to use a, I think, if I can find it, a light fast uh, champagne. Um, and I'm going to start to kind of bring in a little bit more of this creamy colour in here. Um, now, we've got to be careful when we're kind of coming in and over the top of the dark sepia that we've got here. The dark sepia is quite a greeny colour. Um, it's not a greeny colour, it's grey, but it, it's kind of greeny based. That's not it. Um, so if I show you that against, if I show you that, that's the dark sepia against the, uh, that's the warm grey four. You can see it's got a bit of a greeny hue to it. So if you put this, this one, which is a yellowy colour, oops, which is a yellowy colour in with that, um, it's going to kind of accentuate that greeny hue uh, quite a bit so just just be aware when you're layering your colors up what colors you've had down before and what might happen if you put a, a certain color over the top of another one you know it, i mean the the obvious one is is blue and yellow isn't it you know if you've got something blue and then you put something yellow over the top of it you're going to get green i mean there's no there's no getting away with it uh, it is going to go green and that's fine if you want green but if you weren't expecting it then um you know that's that's not so great so always be mindful of what you're going to get when you start to put to lay your colors down so here i'm i'm actually using a little bit more pressure on my pencil on this just to get a, a sort of like a relatively smooth and um quite a vibrant color um with the pigment the the light fast pencils the don't light fast pencils are gorgeous they are they're relatively soft they're more oil based than wax based and they have quite a high opacity so that you know they're going to cover quite well um whereas the polychromos are, are, are slightly less opaque so you get more of that transparency through the layers um and what you'll find is you'll find your favorite combinations you'll find your favorite colors you know you might like to use the um the light fast with your with you know pablos or you might like to use them just on their own or you might like to use them with with polychromas you know whatever you like to use you will find your combination that works well for you um but one thing that i would say just to be really really um aware of is rome wasn't built in a day don't don't fall into the trap of adding a couple of layers onto your drawing and then going well this looks rubbish i'm going to start again because you, you know it, it, if you're doing something really quick and sketchy fair enough but if you're trying to draw something that's realistic and you're trying to kind of build the layers and everything like that up it's going to take a few layers to be able to build up something to make it look realistic there's no getting away with it you know that's what has to happen so um you've got to have patience and you've got to have faith and you've got to have belief um you know it's just that's just what what you've got to have uh, you know, and if you can train yourself to kind of get into the habit of talking, to, it's almost like talking to yourself, coaching yourself, self-coaching, I guess, you know, you, you've got a little voice in the back of your head talking, you know, saying how, how terrible your drawing looks. <laughs> it, normally it's my daughter, um, you know, that looks awful. Uh, but, um, you know, it, you've what you've got to try and do is kind of talk yourself down from there. And, and give yourself a, you know, well, yeah, it does look rubbish at the minute, but you know what? I've only been drawing for five minutes, so give me a chance, for goodness sake, voice in the back of my head. Um, you know, you, you've got to give yourself a bit of a, a talking to, and um, and if you can get into the habit of, of making that little, you know, criticising voice shut up, then that's really good. Um, you know, nobody wants to be 
talk to like that, let alone by yourself. <laughs> um, so again, got some nice colour in those ears there. Um, so now we can start to bring in a little bit of the orange. So let's just have a look for this. Um, have I tried zesty pencil pens on your drawings? Oh, Anna, yes, I have. Um, I have. I think. I think when you're a colour pencil artist, you kind of you try you try everything. Um, you know. And um, I'm just going to have a bit of an experiment here quickly. I'm just going to use this burnt yellow ochre and just see what happens. Yeah, that's okay. We can use that. This is the studio burnt yellow ochre. It, it's um, on pastel mat. Works. Oh. <clears throat> works really really well on pastel mat over the top of other colors but um it it doesn't work quite so well over the top of other colors on smoother paper you've got to use this one first i'm just going to get a, some water so zest it zest it pencil blend it's it's supposed to be um it's supposed to be really good it, it's it's got um it's supposed to have a um, an odor of a citrus odor. That's that's what it's supposed to have, um, and you can um, blend your pencils with it. You basically paint over the top of your pencils, and all of the pigment just melts, and it becomes a little bit like paint. Um, so yes, I have used it. I I really really don't like it. Um, the reason I don't like it is because um I, I feel it dulls the pigment um it also you don't know what it's going to do to the light fastness of your pigment so you know there aren't some people say it's fine other people say it's not but there aren't any actual tests done using the the, the odorless mineral spirits on pencil to see whether the light fast actually is affected or not um so that's that's a, a good reason uh, for me not to use it and the, the 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 biggest reason for me not to use it is because it makes me incredibly ill <laughs> um it gives me the most horrific migraines um i get migraines from uh, light i can get a migraine from somebody wearing a stripy shirt um i can get a migraine from blinds and i get migraines from smells and the zest it brings on the most horrific migraines uh, to the point where I can't actually speak um you know so I don't use it and I can't have it anywhere I had I had some in a in like a water paintbrush thing and um and I kept on smelling it. I was thinking I thought I got rid of that stuff and it was everywhere and I had to wash my pencils and, the, and everything like that because it kind of seeped out um but oh no I don't like it I know I know people use it and I know they do the most amazing job with it if you want to see um, zest it being used on pastel mat really, really successfully, um, have a Google or a search on YouTube for Claudia Sketches. And she has quite a lot of um, tutorials up on YouTube using the zest it um, and does some very, very nice pieces with it as well. And she's very knowledgeable. She's very structured in how she puts her videos across. Not like me, where it's just like a garbled load of rubbish. Um, you know, she's kind of, I think she's practiced hers <laughs> and written it out, whereas mine just goes blur. Um, but she's, a, she's that's a really, really good artist to um, to watch if you want to use the zest it. It works really, really well with her, um, you know, and, and obviously I don't think she has issues with, um, with the smell. But I think you can get odourless, like proper odourless ones, but again, they still affect me. Um, they still make me feel ill so you know they're still chemicals and I've got animals in in my in my studio as well so I prefer not to um, and I don't think I need to but you know uh, I wouldn't ever stop other people using them if they want to um, -bum -bum. what white pencil did you use to draw the image on the paper oh actually it's not a white pencil it was a um, a Pablo ash grey which I haven't got here but it's more, it's like that sort of a colour. It's like a warm greyish, much paler than this actually, but that's that's the one that I used. I like to use the Pablo as a as a, as initial lay down on here because it's easy to get back up and it's easy to draw over the top of. One tip, um, try not to use um, a polychromos white to do your outlines on anything because it's got a bit, it's, it acts as a bit of a resist. So it doesn't really, um, you, you it's difficult to draw over the top of. 
so this this one I'm using here is the walnut brown polychromos walnut brown here um, and I'm just using this just to sort of bring in over the top of the dark sepia that I've got as the initial layer in there just to kind of start to build those layers up a little bit and what's nice on the pastel mat is that we will be able to get some of these little stray hairs in over the top as well so you can get those that light over dark in here really quite nicely Let's just get that a little bit darker so it's almost like you kind of you're going to and to and fro it's all i think it, sometimes it seems like it's one step forward 10 steps back with pastel mat because you kind of do something and then you go over the top of it and get rid of what you've done <laughs> and then come back again and put it back in again and then take it back out again and it's a little bit like that and the hokey cokey you know in out in out that that's kind of what it's what it's like with pastel mat um you know and uh but it, it, it does work, it does work really nicely. So I've not even started putting details in yet, but this still looks really quite like a nice little horse's ear. Um, watercolour paper, blah, blah, blah. It, uh, watercolour paper arches, is it suitable? Uh, it, it is, the arches, the pink one, it is, it's a very, um, it's got quite a, a, a different surface and actually it can end up being really quite grainy. If it's the one with the pink, the pink one, it can it can end up being quite grainy. I've found, um, but so you might need to burnish quite a bit. Um, I just started Parker because I drew him on a piece of Stonehenge and I really disliked it. Switched to Parker. Oh, okay. Oh, I hope he's going well. Um, hi, Fabry. Um, Bonnie uh, got hot press arches. Why didn't you use dark indigo before the dark sepia on the ears? Oh, because the ears are, they're not blue. Uh, so the ears are, uh, they're, they're orange and brown, whereas the main area is black and grey. So using the dark blue in as, a, as an initial base is going to give me a really nice shine of that, that sort of cooler colour coming through, whereas the ears are much warmer, they're, they're brown based and orange based. So if I'd put blue into here, it really would have given me green and I don't want that um that's gonna be amazing paper for pencil if you like uh blah 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 is there only one size of tombow no there are a couple of sizes of tombow don't know whether i've got them here yep i've got one here have i got the other one here don't know if i've got the other one here there's this one i don't tend to use the tombow on the pastel mat but there's this one this one's like a little rectangular one there you can see that and the other one is the 2.3 millimeter little round one and it's the little round one that i use the most of you often mention about 12 Derwent pencils, which are fab, which are these. Oh, those will be the um, the studios, these ones. I love the studios. Uh, they're very hard, very subtle pencils, and they, they just have the most fantastic colours. You won't be able to... I don't think any of the colours relate to any of the other colours in any other brands, so I, I really like those ones. Uh, Kimani, I'm using the dark grey pastel mat for this one. Um... <laughs> I'm always talking to myself. That's all I do. Uh, I'm waiting for my body. Ooh, Len oh, Lenore. Yeah. Well, th hopefully that will um, that will be coming soon. I know that there's been all sorts of issues and stuff like that with um, uh, you know, with the manufacturers. So I'm I'm hoping that Emma's. I think she started to send out the first wave of them. So yeah, really excited about that. So I'm using the terracotta now. I'm just bringing the terracotta in on this edge here. Again, this is all just sort of plotting colour, um, you know, but as the colour kind of goes in, little details kind of start to appear. Um, but then we can kind of build those in later on. So it's just really about plotting colour instead of kind of putting details and stuff in. Um, so I'm just doing that there. Um, I used to get crippling migraine several weeks Um all oh, right, okay. Uh, what's been your favourite subject to draw and what's your favourite? Oh, gosh, that's... Oh, well, you know me. I'm fickle as anything. Everything that I draw is my favourite. <laughs> um, I, I must admit, I have did really, really enjoy drawing the elephant. R really enjoyed drawing that because it was... It happened so quickly and it was such a joyous subject to draw 
Um, and I'm just turning around to look at it now. It's colossal. It's absolutely massive. And the frame, it oh gosh, it looks ama just ama just looks amazing. I love it. And I've sold it. <laughs> it's going next week. Um, but it just looks fantastic. You know, and, and I think I really love the elephant. I think I really do love the elephant. But then I really love the little lion cub that I've just done. Um, you know, he, uh, that was a really, really nice drawing to do. Um, I, I'm really glad the eyes went well on the little, the little lion, I have to say, because, you know, that kind of really, really spurred me on then, uh, you know, I created the eyes and they were looking really quite nice. And I was like, oh gosh, you know, um, maybe I can work on this paper. Maybe it is going to be okay after all. And, you know, it was, and of course that's a, that's, a, um, a tutorial as well. So that's going up on my Patreon in on the 2nd of August. And that's going to be o over all of the tiers. So it just goes on the $5 tier. So, you know, you, and then you and you also, when you join my Patreon, you get everything. You get 18 months worth of um, everything that I've done. Um, and I think what's quite nice now, I've kind of um, started off my Patreon using, you know, doing the stuff that I do. So uh, there was a lot of, um pastel mat work because that's kind of what I was known for and that's that's what I did but kind of getting to know my patrons over the last 18 months you know you realize that not not everybody likes pastel mat and not everybody uses pastel mat so it's been really quite nice I think for me now to understand what my patrons want and to be able to offer the different um the different sorts of paper in there as well so that's that's been quite an eye-opener for me I think to you know to, to kind of be offering different tutorials on different papers I think that's you know it's not it's not an easy thing to do jumping backwards and forwards between papers but it's been great for my development I think you know and and my development has always been incredibly important for me wherever I've worked I've always wanted to develop I've always wanted to know things and um, you know not be the best out of anybody but be the best that I can be you know so actually using these different papers just recently has been um it's been really good for me and I've it's kind of like you know kind of um I don't know itching you know get itching that I don't know what the name is for it what's the what's the word you know when you when you're sort of like itching a scratch scratching an itch <laughs> something like that anyway um you know it's that it's that want and that need to develop but not not being able to do it and now I'm actually able to to do that I'm able to kind of um you know feed that need for me to be able to develop stuff uh and and that's been been really really good for me you know because it's I don't think you ever reach the top of anything, do you? Um, you know, and, and some people don't want to reach the top and other people, it's not necessarily about reaching the top. It's about it's about getting to a level where where you're, you know, it, it satisfies you. And that's that's kind of what what I'm all about. It's not about ever about being, you know, the best at anything. I don't think I could ever be the best at anything. There are such phenomenal artists out there. And having those phenomenal artists out there is brilliant because it means that they can spur you on, you know. So that's that's always good, having something to aspire to, towards, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, waffling on again. Um, how... Oh, well, first time I hold up with you, figured out the time change. Oh, that's good. Would you recommend using a light box to transfer your sketch? Well, you could do... But the um, if you were going to use a light box to transfer your sketch onto pastel mat, what I would suggest is that you have a line art and a really good line art rather than an actual image to transfer. Because if you've got a line art, all you're going to see is black and white and that you probably would be able to kind of, um, you'd probably be able to do that quite easily. Uh, you can't really see very well through the pastel mat because it's quite thick and you certainly can't with the pastel mat board. Uh, you know, you can't see anything through the pastel mat board. Um, I'm just using, this is another really, really good pencil, a Caput Molten Violet. And this combined with the oranges gives a, oops, gives a really, really good, vibrant, rich colour. Uh, so I use that quite a lot. Um, so all I'm doing here is we've just got one layer in there at the minute of the orange and I'm just starting to bring in some of these dark bits um, just the second layer in here really 
um, and I can already start to bring in a few of these little detaily bits. Um, you know, we don't need to go mad, but just bringing in some of those dark areas in there. What I like to do when I'm going into sort of like a shadow, so, you know, we've got sort of like quite a big shadow here. What I like to do is go in and under, almost as if that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm actually drawing underneath a layer of hair. Um, and that really helps to kind of get that depth as well. Um, you know, and it gives me, because that's how it feels for me, I feel like I'm going up and under something, that really helps me then um, kind of figuring out the drawing and it, it helps my brain understand what it is that I'm doing. Um, so uh, I do that quite a lot in my drawings. I go up and under when I'm doing shadows. And it just seems to really help. Um, what have we got here? How do you price your work hour? your work hour on drawings um i i don't tend to go per hour with my pricing i tend to um i've just got a set price and and basically how i how i worked out my prices when i went full time and this i mean it might work for you it might just not work for you at all and there are all sorts of different ways in, in kind of figuring out how you can um how you can price your art but for me it was about how how many commissions do I, can I do a month and how much do I need to earn to be able to pay my mortgage? And those were the two questions that I asked myself. Um, and that's how I came up with my initial price uh, when, I, when I went for full time. Um, I also made sure that I wasn't pricing myself out of the market as in I was looking at other artists who were at a similar stage to me, similar style to me you know, offering sort of similar, a similar product and making sure that I wasn't just kind of pricing myself way, way higher than any of them or in, as a matter of fact, way, way lower. Excuse me. So, um, you know, that, that kind of was a, I had to take that into account as well. Um, and then what I did was I, I then set myself a, a like a dream price. So, you know, uh, you know, if I could think of a price that my I'd be really, really happy for my art to sell, what would that price be? So I'd have that in the back of my head. And then as I kind of build my business up, um, I can then increase my prices to eventually, hopefully, reach my goal dream price. Um, and, and I did that last year and I've now kind of gone past that, um, you know, and my, my price is now start at 600 for my smallest piece. But when I open my commission books, people don't tend to buy the, the smallest piece. They tend to buy the next one up. So, uh, you know, that's how I've kind of structured mine. It's not going to work for everybody. Um, and there are some really good videos out there, actually. If you if you go onto um, YouTube, search for, I don't know, Kirsty Partridge, somebody like that. I mean, she's got tons and tons of brilliant videos. Um, she's got, I think she's got a pricing one where she goes through a couple of different, a few different ways of pricing your art, uh, which is really, really good, you know, so you might want to kind of have a look at something like that. Um, those lion eyes have amazing reflectors. I know, I know. They were, well, do you know, well, I'll show you in a minute, um, because I don't think it's a person. I'll tell you who I think it is. <laughs> um, has she mentioned the paper she's using and which pencils? Um, who, me? Have I mentioned the paper and which pencils? I'm using pastel map dark grey pastel mat and I'm using a mixture of polychromos, studios and pablos. Um, do grey pastel mat, all oh, right, okay. Um, I'm having trouble doing up and under strokes, it's bizarre. I think it's, I think it's about just getting used to it. Um, just wave at my daughter who's arrived, making faces through the window. <laughs> I'll just tell her I'm live streaming. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think it's just about practicing. So all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of, I've got my pencil and I'm just kind of, I'm, all I'm doing is moving my fingers and not moving my wrist. And I'm just going up like that. That's all I'm doing. Uh, you know, and I think, I think it's about kind of getting all of those different sorts of ways of holding your pencil, isn't it? I think that's, that can, that can be really useful. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to bring in some of this dark red in here, this uh, Caput Morton Violet, I'm going to bring in here. And the reason I want to bring this red in here is because I've already got orange there, but I want to make it darker. I want to bring a bit of black in there. And if I bring a bit of black in here uh, over the top of the orange, it, it is going to go green because the polychromos black is, is quite blue based. 
Um, so if I then put black over the top of here, it is going to go like a bit of a sludgy colour. But if I add some of this red um, in over the top, this Caput Morton Violet in over the top, uh, then the black that goes over the top of it isn't going to then turn green. So, um, so if I bring my black in then over the top of that and I bring a little bit of black into here as well, then that's not going to go that horrible sludgy green in there. So that's quite good. So um, yeah, so I'm, I'm using, that's that's what I'm using. I've put the pencils I'm using in the description. So you should be able to find which, which colours I'm using. I'm, and I'm, I'm using those. I'm not using any different ones. So, um, you know, I'm using the polychromos, which are kind of the workhorse pencil. They're a really, really good pencil to um, to start with. You know, if you're if you're kind of starting out with your coloured pencils, the polys are really, really good. Um, they're, they're, they're quite hard. They're um, they're oil based. They have a good range of colours. They've got great greys in there. And, um, you know, they're just they're just good, good all round pencils. Um, this again. Is, this is the Caput Morton Violet, so I use this one an awful lot. And it's like um, it's like a really violety red, purpley red. Uh, it works really well, really, really well with the dark blue, the the dark indigo, and um, the the browny colours as well. And um, works really well with sort of like the oranges too. So, and I'm going to bring a really bright, vibrant orange through. Oh, I have got a cinnamon here. I lied. I don't know where that's come from. Um, I've got the cadmium orange. So the cadmium orange I use a lot and I like to use a lot of vibrant colours in with, um, uh, you know, in with my drawings, especially of animals, because you do get really vibrant colours in there. So the cadmium orange I use in, in horse eyes, dog eyes, um, I'll use in something like this, it fell on the floor a bit, so it's not very sharp, but it should be OK. And I can just bring in a little bit of this cadmium orange just into these really bright um, bits in here. Um, so I'm using sort of medium pressure in there just to get this sort of orangey bit and then I can bring in a little bit of the orange down here as well. So using your bright colours can be really, really useful. Again, just watch what you're layering the colour over the top of because if you're going to be layering it over the top of greys, warm grey or cold greys or the blacks or anything like that, then you know, you're know you going to get green. So uh, you've just got to be careful. And with the with the polys, they are that little bit more transparent. So you can kind of see the layers through each other. They're, they're, the polys are brilliant for eyes because you can layer and see all of those lovely transparent colours coming through. Whereas if you use something that's much more opaque, they tend to just cover, you know, the the the, um, the layer underneath you, you still get the mix of color but they tend to just sort of color cover it um, and that's what i really like about the polys and the studios as well that they they as well are, are, um, are tran more, more translucent really okay so then i'm going to use a little bit more red and then it's just a case of sort of going in and out with your colors and this is the layering process you know this is this is kind of how the layering works and how you get those lovely colors just by kind of you know keeping on keeping on going um, it's very rare that I would use just one color in in something uh, you know just choose one color and just layer that up it's very rare that I would do that it, it might be that you find a color that's absolutely spot-on perfect for whatever it is that you're drawing and I've, I find that if I find a color that's perfect it's usually one of the light fasts um, you know, it, they they seem to have colours that tend to be, um, you know, really, really unique. Um, and that are sort of, so I've done fox red Labradors and, and some of the colours in the light fast range have been just the perfect colour. You know, I've, I've not had to mix it with anything or, you know, anything like that. So that's that's worked really, really well. So you can see how this, this is coming through quite nicely here. Um, one of the things when you're using the dark grey pastel mat as well is that um, you do get a little bit of a different effect I think uh, I think you can get more of a pastel effect um, I, I find with with the white it it, it tend you tend to get more of a sort of a blending or a blended effect with it with the with the dark grey it's much easier I think to kind of get your 
I don't know. It, it's it, you just you definitely get a different feel to the um, you know to the dark grey than you do on the on the white. And it is 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 much easier to get uh, the light over the top of the dark as well. So if I come in here with the cream, and I just wanted to put sort of like some of the cream bits in here, so I just wanted to lighten up that bit there. So just bring a little bit of light in there, a little bit of light in there, and it works really really well. This is the cream Pablo that I'm using here. Um, you know the the light over the dark works brilliantly on the darker pastel matte colours. On the whiteboard, it still works, but it doesn't work as well. You know, you can I tend to use techniques that are very similar to using a um, a smoother paper. Um, do do do, Bonnie. I'm way behind you here, but I just bought the Pico Genie Polar, and when it arrives, I will do. Oh yeah, brilliant! That's brilliant. Thank you so much for that. Um, the 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 Genie ones are supposed to be are supposed to be good. I bought the one, the little periscope one, um, and it just it just wasn't didn't have enough um, resolution the resolution wasn't high enough um, which was unfortunate really but uh, right so I'm now going to come into the into the ear area here and start to bring a little bit of color into here so again just nice smooth gentle color going in with the pastel mat we don't need to worry too much about you know if things go a little bit wrong because you can just layer over the top of it and you know no problem at all um, I would say always make sure that you are following the hair direction because that's really important. With wavy hair and curly hair, it's not so um, it's not as important, I guess, as if you were use as if you were drawing something with with smooth hair because you know wavy hair can kind of change, can't it? It can move around. Um, so again, I'm going to come in. So we could have all sorts of different colours and makes of pencils that kind of uh, you know <laughs> create this. Um, and some pencils will work better than others and some pencils you'll you'll feel oh that's not working so well but this one works a little bit better and it's um, kind of up to you really and your personal preference as to what you like so I'm just bringing those colors in down here I'm just going to bring a little bit of that cream in there as well um, just around here bring that in there this is the Pablo so I'd, um, I've got the ivory, the, the polychromos ivory as well. I'll just sort of bring that in. That's It's definitely more... The, the Pablo on the dark grey pastel mat almost acts a little bit like a pastel. It's quite chalky. Um, you know, and that, that I think that's why it works really, really well. I used the Pablos for the elephant and it worked brilliantly. It worked so well. Um, you know on the elephant it really really did um, and it just um, they just I think that's why it happened so quickly as well you know the the the, the Pablo colors I was using were very very similar to the um, the color of the paper which which was you know so it made it just that little bit easier really um, what determines what kind of paper you use um so that's quite it's quite an interesting one so sometimes it will be because um there's 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 like a, a ton of texture that i think oh gosh that's going to be amazing on something like drafting film where i can use the slice tool and really really get into all of that texture sometimes it's because like with the elephant it's it's the color kind of just dictates you know the mid-tones are the same as the dark gray pastel matte and when I was talking about doing the elephant, because I, I kind of do these little um, intro videos for my patrons to kind of talk them through my thoughts before I actually start doing a, a drawing and a tutorial. And I, um, I... So, okay, so I've got... A, <laughs> people don't have the colours. So pe people are worrying that they don't have these, um, the colours that I've got here. So I've, I've put all of these colours in the in the description. So you should have. Let me just check on the description. So we've got um, dark sepia, black, warm grey two, warm grey four, burnt sienna, burnt ochre, caput mortem, violet, ivory, cadmium orange, walnut brown, terracotta, dark indigo. So all of the colours that I'm using are in the description. But I wouldn't worry if you haven't got them. Um, you know, it, it's you can just pick up any colours really. It's not not going to be a not going to be an issue. Um, 
but yeah so back to the back to the paper um it, it kind of depends on the subject and uh, sort of my my initial thought about how i'm going to draw something um I tend to do an awful lot on white paper just because I, I quite like that and I like the, the feel of it and I like the techniques that I use for the white paper uh, but um, the dark grey is a, is a great one for using you know like I said with the elephant it worked really really well for that so um, love the way you continue to turn your pencil do you do this subconsciously ah right okay so that's an interesting one so you'll hear a lot of artists say oh, they, you know they, they turn their pencil because they want to keep a point on the end of it um, that's not why I turn my pencil and it is almost like an instinctive thing the reason I turn my pencil is to get the sweet spot on the end so when you're using a pencil if you're using it all it just it, just in one place what happens is it wears down the end of that and you get sort of like a little smooth smooth point and the reason I turn mine round is either to, to change that point to something a little bit sharper or a little bit flatter or a little bit smoother and that's I'm a very feely person so I can feel everything that's going down I can feel the end of the pencil on the paper so if I've got a piece where it's feeling a little bit gritty or a little bit sharp then I'll turn it so that um, I'm getting something that feels a little bit smoother and that's kind of what I'm doing if you were watching me doing a uh, just a, a plain block of colour somewhere say and I had to get everything the same texture and the same color and the same everything you wouldn't see me moving my pencil because I would get to a point where I've got right the sweet spots there this is what I'm doing and then I'm just uh, just kind of using uh, putting the pencil color down and I wouldn't turn my pencil around because then it would change the um, the way that the pencil and the pigment lays down on the paper so uh, again when I'm when I'm doing my tutorials I talk about you know find the sweet spot if we've got to kind of just do one whole bit of colour then it's better to just keep going so you know if you're filling in say a neck or something you're better to do it all in one go because you get that you get that sort of that muscle memory of how you have how the pressure you're using the point on the end of the pencil if you keep stopping and starting you're going to get kind of you know bits in there you're going to get um those sort of lines through there and it's not going to look as smooth so that's the reason why i kind of turn my pencil around all of the time is kind of to, to get that to to get that feeling if something's not feeling quite right then that's kind of what i end up doing so um, yeah but a lot of people do it to, to keep a point on their pencil but that's not why I do it um, and actually it is it, it's not it is something that I just do subconsciously and I had to think about why I did it which was, was quite interesting uh, so I've got the black here again and you'll notice that none of these are particularly sharp some of them are sharp because I've been it's like this one's really sharp so this is the the, um, the copper beach here. Uh, this one's really sharp, but um, that's because I've been using the smooth paper. So I've been kind of using sharp pencils on there. But um, now I'm just using the uh, these blunter ones. I find the blunter ones on pastel mat to, to work better. And also, you know, if you are continually sharpening your pencils on pastel mat, they are going to end up being minute and it's going to cost you a fortune. So you, you're better off using blunt pencils. You don't really need sharp ones. Um, you know, I know with my elephant, I did sharpen my pencil quite a lot, but we had a lot of like little lines going in there and stuff, you know, so it, it was, it, we kind of needed it to be sharp, but um, with something like this, you don't need sharp pencils. So this is just the black going in here. And then what time are we on now? I'm going to, um, I'll talk you through my little lion cub as well at the minute. Uh, in a minute and then um, I'll just do a little bit more of the, the forelock as well actually I'm just going to bring a little bit more of this cream in here and then we can do kind of pull in a bit of detail in there this is just the ivory polychromos in here and then I'm going to bring a little bit of that in just over that cadmium orange there just to give it a bit of a shine and you don't need to go full on with um, details you know the, the details aren't it's not necessary to get a ton of details in something you can have just enough detail 
to be able to kind of tell the story and to be able to you know allow your brain to work out what's going on and then that's it you know you don't need to pack it full of details you don't need to draw every single hair um, but, but drawing a semblance of the hair is really useful so this is the cadmium orange again that I'm just sort of like filling in a little bit in here bringing in there and you can see we haven't put any detail in there at all and that will come and it's much much easier to to look beyond the detail if you like uh, and and draw everything that's underneath rather than trying to get full on with your detail straight away so you know really picking up on what's underneath the detail it's almost like drawing from the inside out so you know thinking about how that hair sort of grows you know where it's growing from how it's growing out uh, getting all of that in before you start to add all of the detail and what you'll what you'll probably end up finding is that once you've kind of been using or or layering for a, for a, a while you'll probably end up finding that your detail just appears you know because you've been putting tonal values in you've been putting a color here you've been putting a color there and then all of a sudden it's like oh hang on a second i've got some detail here you know and then you can just kind of work on that you, you the the more pencil uh, marks you put into your drawing so here we've got sort of like little tufts of hair the more shapes you get in the more you are able to use those shapes to then create even more shapes and even and then your detail starts to come um, you know so that's it, it's the shapes that are so important oh hi Leanne how are you nice to hear from you um yeah, so I'm just going to put a little bit more. This is the Caput Morton Violet again in here. And uh, I can just sort of bring that in quite roughly. You'll find that when you, you know, when you start to kind of add, a, particularly on the dark grey, when you start to add your darker colours, even over the top of the lighter ones, that grain can come back again, which can be a bit annoying, but it's it's just how it is. Um, oh, that's kind of you, Neha. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to, this is the warm, so this is one of the most magical pencils that you could ever hope to own. <laughs> this is the Harry Potter of pencils. It's the, um, it's the warm grey two and you will find me using the warm grey two on every single piece that I do. Uh, this is the magical smoothing pencil that will smooth even your grainiest grains, um, out. <laughs> And it's just to do with the pigment, you know, it's just got one of those pigments that's lovely and um, and smoothing. So, and I can use this pretty much over any colour, even white, and it's going to really, really help get that, kind of get rid of the grain and, and smooth and everything like that. Um, so I can use it here just for some like little highlights. Um, I can add sort of like a little bit of, little bit of something in there. Um, where am I going to use it? Use it a little bit down here just to kind of get rid of some of those grainy bits, and then up on the top here, and in over the top of that red as well, and it will just really nicely smooth everything out, which is brilliant. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to bring in a little bit of. I think I'm going to use the walnut brown. Where am I going to use that? Oh, I might use the chocolate actually. So the studio chocolate here and then I'm going to start to actually bring in a little bit of detail into here so the studios are very hard uh, very thin not as thin as the very thins the the prisma very thins but they are thin um, now I know a few people have some of the issues with some of them that they're not as light fast as some of the others and yet you're absolutely right some of them are uh, not as light fast and that's that's a personal opinion you know preference if you don't want to use them then then don't i i like the studios i tend to use them in with other colors so i'm, I'm not too worried about the light, light fastness of them um oh hi lily Ah, oh, that's really sweet of you thank you you are very awesome Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I didn't feel very awesome today as I'm <laughs> struggling along with everything that I've got. It's been a mad day today. I'm not used to that. It's funny, isn't it? We're just not used to those mad days. Um, I had to go to the post office 
and I had to, um, and it's not my fa- most favourite job, I have to say, but I, I, we, we were standing there, this other man and I were standing there with our masks on. I keep on forgetting to take to put a mask on. Um, you know, I've, I've put some in the car now, but I keep on forgetting. I Halfway into wherever I'm supposed to be going, I'm like, oh, no, I forgot my mask. So uh, I had to go back and get my mask. Anyway, um, so I'm there standing in this tiny post office and we're apparently not allowed to move because the man who was doing the money uh, was 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 coming and going and this man who was doing the money I am not kidding you it was so grumpy and we were standing there for probably about half an hour I'd say and he was so grumpy and it's almost like you know and I said to this man standing next to me waffled through through my mask at him I said you know isn't it sad that people seem to have lost their um you know niceness now that they've got a mask on or whatever and I just just made me feel a little bit sad really um you know that this it just nothing not even a smile um you know so yeah so that made me grumpy <laughs> uh, but and then of course i had all of the other bits and pieces i had to be doing running around doing stuff so but then i picked my elephant up and everything was better so that was good uh right okay so can you show me how you use the slice tool, please? I can, but I can't on this because I wouldn't use a slice tool on the dark grey. But this is the slice tool here. Um, and this is the retractable one, the manual one. So it kind of goes up and down and it stays out. And how I tend to use it is I'll, I'll, I'll show you on the lion, actually. I use it upside down, so I hold it upside down and then I move it slightly to the left. I'm right-handed, slightly to the left. And then what you're aiming to do is you're aiming to, to um, pull down on the pigment on the side, not do that. And it's a safety blade, so it's not going to cut me, but I'm not going to press really hard. Um, you know, you're not looking to do that. You're looking to do that. That's what you're aiming for. Um, I'll try it on here. I don't think it'll work because it'll, it'll just go back to the grey and you won't be able to see it. But you can see there how I'm doing it. Um, I'm just sort of dragging that pigment off. I don't know if you can see the little bit on the end there. So that's all I'm doing is just dragging the pigment off with the edge rather than going like that. If I did that, I'd be cutting and then you're going to leave marks in the paper and you don't want to do that. What you ultimately want to be doing is just dragging the pigment off the paper. That's what you want to be doing. Um, so I'm going to be coming in here with the Pablo cream and I'm just going to add probably need to sharpen this really but I just want to add some of these little um, little hairs in here and this is what this is what you'll find you'll put stuff in and then you'll put something else in and then you'll have to go back again and put something else in and that's kind of how it works with pastel mat really you just got to keep kind of keep going and then I can just in there as well um oh that's fine that's fine kate thank you uh right and then we're just going to bring in again i can just bring some like little hairs in there and down here and then it's all about just building 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 let's build some more up in there This photos have been um, photoshopped, so there's actually some bits that have sort of almost been cut off a little bit because it's had the black background put in it. Is it just practice or is there a trick to placing the slice tool when you want it on the drawing? Um, I think it's practice. I think I think it's all about practice, to be honest, um, because yeah, because what it is is you kind of you're kind of going. You're wanting to get the, the the best position on here, and then it's about. I think it's about confidence. I think I think a lot of it is about confidence and and kind of knowing that what you're doing is the right thing. If you're a little bit tentative with it, it can kind of go in the wrong direction. But saying that, the slice tools can have uh, a mind of their own and kind of kind of do their own thing. So you know you, you do have to try and control them. So I'm just coming down here a little bit more. So I'll probably need to spend another hour or so on this ear, just really building those layers up and getting all of those little details in there. 
and then I'm just going to come down here as well just bring in the, the orange bits in here so what time are we on so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the little lion that I did um, and kind of talk you through some of those things and what you could you know if you if you're planning on doing a tutorial what you could expect um, but I hope this has been useful this little ear um, oh that's kind of you Erin thank you <laughs> um, when I draw in the evening there are a lot of shadows from my hands it's distracting oh yeah uh, so I've got a really big I've, I've been using them for about two and a half three years they're the big Niwa lights and they're big studio softbox lights uh, I've got two of them and what I do is they actually are in front of me which at first was a bit of an issue because I was like well I can't I can't actually see anything but what I discovered was if I wear a little visor, <laughs> I look a complete idiot. Um, but I, if I wear a little, vi a little visor, then I can actually see what I'm drawing and the light doesn't get in my eyes. So that's what I do. Um, you know, so if, if you come and, and draw with me in my studio and I put my little hat on, don't, don't, don't freak out. <laughs> it's just what I do. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, what's my favourite black surface? um no the pastel mat is the um the pastel mat is what's the pastel mat the pastel mat is anthracite i'm just going to move this over here now um the pastel mat is anthracite and the um the i think the, and it's like a dark sort of charcoaly gray i think the best black for me um let's just get him looking a bit better can we see that i think we can see that might have to just go in and um, just make sure he's uh, uh, in focus. Hang on. Get away from the horse. Okay. Yeah. So I've got a bit of a horse on that as well. So, uh, yeah, the, the best black, I think, is probably... Um, I like the black mount board to be honest. I do like the black mount board. I think that's that's a that's a good one. Um, I do quite like that one. So uh, or the the black black the um, Fabriano black black. That's quite a good one as well. So yeah. So this is my little uh, lion. Just bring him down just a touch. Uh, I've actually got a. I've had this for quite a while, and it and it's just been sitting and sitting, and I've put it on my on my drawing board. And it's um, a magnetic sheet. Um, and it's great for using when I've got pen, when I've actually got, I'll just bring it down a bit so you can see. So I've just got these magnets, which are from my Icarus board. And um, it's just been great to sort of, um, you know, have when I'm using smooth paper. It's been really, really good. Um, and then I can move it around under my camera as well, which has been brilliant. So I can just, I don't have anything stuck down. I can just move it about. So this is my little lion cub. Um, and I've really enjoyed that. It looks a little bit paler on the screen, actually. But I've really, really enjoyed um, drawing this one. And it's it's on the uh, on the Fabriano, on the traditional white. So it's not white. It's quite creamy. Um, but it's, um, yeah, I've really, really enjoyed drawing him. Really enjoyed it. Uh, lots and lots of... I mean, it's just pencil strokes. At the end of the day, it's just pencil strokes. That's that's how I've created him. It's just pencil strokes, more pencil strokes over the top, a different colour over here, a different colour over there. And that's kind of how I've created him in, um, uh, you know, as a tutorial. And he's a full tutorial. I don't know how many hours he is, but he's a full tutorial. And I've just kind of talked you through. And if you've never seen one of my tutorials before, um, it's not really like one of these draw along sessions. I do I do sometimes ramble on about stuff, but only if we've got to a part where we're I never I never time lapse anything. So if we get to a part where it's all the same and I don't speed it up, I let you do that. And what I tend to do is I'll either um, kind of talk intermittently or I will talk about something completely different you know, something that might be helpful, like, you know, something to do with social media or um, confidence boosting or, you know, something like that. Um, so, yeah, you know, that that's how I kind of talk through and you get everything, you know, you get, I try to name all of the colours, I try to explain how all of the 
the pressure I use, the the pencil strokes I use, uh, you know, why I'm using certain colours. Um, and the other thing that I tend to try and do, and, and because I'm talking as I'm drawing, you get all of my thought process as well. And one of the things that I, I try to do is to kind of preempt colours. So you, you, I might put a colour down and you might be thinking, well, why on earth is she using that colour? And I'll try to explain why I'm using a certain colour. And it could be because I've kind of thought about what I'm going to do three steps down the line. And if I put this colour on now, what will happen is when I add a, um, this colour on in three layers time, that's what will happen. So I'm hoping that what happens when I kind of talk you, talk you through something, you'll then be able to kind of take those thoughts and be able to put them into your own drawings, you know, and be able to kind of take those techniques and start to use them, um, you know. So and then this this here, I like to think that this little reflection in this eye here is Pride Rock. So I like to think that this is Simba and this is Pride Rock here. I mean, it could very well be a person, but in my mind, it's Pride Rock. <laughs> and and funnily enough, actually, when we, um, you know, when we look at these, the, the, the reflections in the eyes, uh, when I first looked at it, I was thinking, oh, blimey, how I can't really see anything in this eye apart from reflection. So I can't see any pupil or anything like that. But all I did was I drew what I saw and I built it up gradually and I kind of build these tones up gradually. So they started as very, very light layers and I just build them up very, very, very gradually. Um, you know, a little bit of blue in there, a bit of white over the top, tried to indicate a little bit of cloud. I mean, look at these clouds. Very proud of those clouds, I have to say. It's my first landscape. <laughs> um yeah i know we're in i know it is, it is it's definitely fried rock and these little sort of like um textures in the eye and it's all so important but if you just look at what it is that you're drawing if you just look at the shapes look at the colors and just draw what is actually in front of you and be very very mindful of your the tones so the lightest areas the darkest areas you know really really concentrate on what it is that you're drawing um y you know you you should you should be able to to get something you know very very similar and it just takes practice it takes practice um yeah, the the paper it's fabriano artistico hot press uh, traditional white um so it's that sort of creamy creamy color uh it's very nice actually i'm doing another piece on it now i quite like it i've bought some sort of full sheets of it which is um yeah quite like it uh so yeah so that's my little my little lion um so he i've just got to edit him now um and my elephant as well and then both of them will be up on my on my patreon uh on the 2nd of august um and like I say, they're all full tutorials. So I don't think there's about 20 hours. 20 hours of the elephant. There's probably similar on the on the lion. Um, and then I'll have my beginner tutorial coming um, mid-August. And my beginner one is going to be um, all about sort of pencils, all about paper, just a proper beginnery, not necessarily drawing something, but really looking at pencils and looking at the marks that they make and looking at why I'd use certain ones over the others and all of that type of thing. Uh, so that's going to be coming sort of like mid, mid Augusty, hopefully. Um, and then hopefully this, this, uh, this video about how I progressed and developed, that will be out on, I'll, I'll share it to my Patreon um subscribers first and then and then i'll i'll release that to youtube so everybody will be able to see it but hopefully that will really really help and um, will help you to kind of understand how how i'm now seeing different things i think as you develop you you start to see things you know stuff that you wouldn't see before starts to jump out at you uh you know and i think it's it, it's it's quite quite interesting how that sort of happens and how you sort of develop your own style but you you kind of start to push yourself as well and there's sort of there's all sorts of things that you can do to really help you push yourself as a beginner as well you know things to kind of look out for but a lot of it is about you uh, a lot of things that happen that go wrong are down to blockages that you as, a, as an artist has or you as a person has and you know finding things that are going to really really help uh, you know to sort of building strategies that are going to help in certain circumstances is really useful 
um so uh yeah so i hope that's i hope that's been useful don't forget as well i mean if you didn't know and you want to join me send me an email because i'm, I'm i'll be i don't know how many people i can i can add in but i've got a um a zoom a free zoom q a on saturday afternoon 2 p.m uk time and we're going to be talking or you're going to be asking questions all about um artist business you know if you want to if you want to start a business or if you or if you're currently running a business or you know whatever it is that you want to do around building a business from your art i'm doing a q a uh, on saturday at two o'clock uh, you just need to email me bonnie.snowden at gmail.com and make sure it's bonnie with a y and snowden with an o n uh, if you email me i will send you your um invitation um and you can ask me questions so um i'm going to do my hair and i'm going to put some makeup on um going to have the dogs in there because nobody else is at home so if they start playing up that's going to all be very fun um but hopefully you'll be able to join me on saturday um, oh, just in to catch you before you go, it's looking fab. I was wondering if you had a chance to know Alexandra. <laughs> I'm just too busy. I need. To, I was thinking I must do something with the um, with the Lyra Rembrandt. Maybe I should do that next month. Maybe I should do sort of like a separate one with the Lyra Rembrandt. I think that's quite a good idea. Uh, Lily, thank you ever so much. Um, thank you everybody for joining me. Hope that's been a useful session. Um, and catch up next week, and we'll have a look at kind of drawing the the. Um, bring this back in again. We'll look at having a having a um, drawing the the four locky area in here as well next week. So uh, thank you all so much for joining me. Um, it's been a pleasure. I'm going to go get my tea now and uh, see you all later. Okay, bye.